This video is a tutorial sheet on the Nyquist stability criteria. So the purpose of this video is to provide students with a number of examples they can use to test their own understanding. I'll remind you what you need to do. You should pause the video after reading the questions and try the questions by yourself. Only look at the solutions provided once you've made a proper attempt, otherwise you won't know whether you can do this or not. You can also produce your own tutorial examples if you want and use software like MATLAB to test your solutions. And we'll note at the bottom, once you're competent in analysis, which is this tutorial, then the video series will start moving on to how we can use this in feedback loop design. So just some quick background to remind you the sort of knowledge you need for this tutorial sheet. We remind you that Nyquist gives a quick graphical view of closed loop stability, so that's the stability of this transfer function, and you'll see the sort of feedback loop we're talking about here at the top. For most examples, you're going to want no encirclements of the minus one point, that is where the open loop system GM is stable. So you've got to be able to plot the Nyquist of a loop transfer function GM. Generally speaking, we've said do sketches, but note that accuracy is important near minus one. You need to know the Nyquist stability criterion. We'll state that in a minute. You need to be able to complete the Nyquist plots to ensure they're closed. And you need to know how to count encirclements. Now, the Nyquist stability criteria, just in case you've forgotten, we need to know what NO is, i.e. the number of open loop right half plane poles. So that'll be in GM. We need to know what NC means, which is the number of closed loop right half plane poles. So that's obviously the poles of this transfer function and NQ, the number of clockwise encirclements of the minus one point by the Nyquist diagram. And this is the formula that we're given, NQ plus NO equals NC. Generally, you use Nyquist to get NQ, you read NO from the open loop, and then you can work out what NC is. Clearly, we're closed loop stable only if NC is zero. Now, just to remind you, you can always check your answers with MATLAB. MATLAB's got tools to do Nyquist and root loci. It's got tools to do the closed loop step responses and indeed to calculate the closed loop poles. So if you're ever not sure, go to MATLAB and use this to get the exact answers and compare it with what you've done. First question then. Use Nyquist to assess the stability of G when connected with the unity negative feedback. Now, again, I'm going to put a reminder here and I won't do this in future, you should now pause the video and try this question by yourself before you look at the solutions that I'm now going to provide. OK, the first step in a question like this we've said before is to do a crude sketch of the bode plots. We don't need an exact bode particularly if we're only going to get the Nyquist. So what I'm going to do is mark the corner frequencies you see I've got 0.1, 1, and 2. Now, I can see this has got no integrators, so it will be flat for low values of frequency. And then we hit a 0, so the slope will go up. And then we hit a pole, the slope will go flat. And then we hit another pole, the slope will go down. So what we've got is a gain plot, something like this. Now, you'll notice that initially the gain goes up because there's a whole decade between this 0.1 and this 1. We expect the gain to go up um, in the frequency range 0.1 to 1. So we'll come back to that in a bit. Now, what about the phase? Well, because this has got a right half plane pole, I need to be a little bit careful before I start. So let's write down what the phase argument is. The argument of G is going to be tan to the minus 1 of omega over 0.1 minus tan to the minus 1 omega over 2, and then we're going to have minus 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega. Now, what you can see is there's a double minus in this last bit, so we're essentially going to get a plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega. So the phase will start at minus 180. So I'm going to just put my axis down. Then you're going to get to the 0 0.1, and you see there's a plus I mark it here, can you see there's a plus 10 to the minus 1, so the phase will go up, the phase asymptote. Then we get to the 1, and again, you notice this is going to have a plus 
because there's a double minus. So the phase asymptote goes up to zero and then it comes back down like this. So I'm expecting a phase diagram that does something along these lines. Now I'm not exactly sure what's happening. OK, I'll circle it with black in this area here. So I might want a couple of explicit calculations just to be on the safe side. So what I'm going to do is calculate the argument of g of j1. So basically I'm going to put omega equals 1 into this formula here. So you can do that in your own time and you'll see what you get is minus 77 degrees. And therefore this point here corresponds to a point there minus 77. So we have indeed gone into quadrant 4. Now just for interest we also notice that the gain seemed to be going up in that frequency range. So let's find the modulus of g of j1 which again I know you'll be able to do yourself. So I'm going to do approximate because remember we're only doing sketching. So if I put 1 into the 0 which is s plus 0.1 I essentially get 1. So I'm going to put 10 over and then I will get root 2 times root 5 which gives me root 10 or approximately 3. You can do it more accurately if you want but for a sketch it's probably not worth it. So now let's have a look at the information we've got before we go to the Nyquist plot. We've got the starting point. Here it is. The starting point is 10 over, oh sorry, 1 over 2 which is a half. So we're starting at a half. And we're also starting at minus 180 degrees. Later on we've got this point here, 77 degrees, minus 77 and 3. Asymptotically we come back to minus 90 degrees. So you can see the phase goes first through quadrant 3 and then into quadrant 4 but approaches the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. The gain initially goes up and then comes back to zero. So now what we do is put that information onto a Nyquist diagram. So here's our Nyquist diagram. So what have we got? We said we started at minus 0.5 and I'll mark the minus 1 point because we'll need that in a minute. Now the key thing is we said later on we had a gain of 3 and a phase of minus 77. So you'll see that's a point somewhere out here. We said the phase basically went in to this quadrant and then came back again to the negative imaginary axis. So you've got a Nyquist diagram that's rather peculiar that looks a bit like that. And I can of course do the mirror image. I've run out of space to fit it on but you can see where it's where it's going. So there's your Nyquist diagram, give or take. So the other part of the question was it said use Nyquist to assess the closed loop stability. So for this system we had NO equals 1. There was one open loop right half plane pole. We've got NQ equals 0, NC equals NO plus NQ equals 1. So therefore you can see your closed loop unstable. You have got one closed loop right half plane pole. However, what you will equally notice is that if you increase the gain, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose K greater than 2, then you'll see what happens if, if I do my Nyquist plot. Now, of course, it's going to get much, much bigger. So I'm just using this dotted line to indicate what's going on. OK, see this dotted blue line. You can see if k is greater than 2, then you're going to get nq equals minus 1, which implies nc equals 0. So you can make this system closed loop stable if k is bigger than 2. Now, you might want to check your answers using MATLAB. So we're just a quick reminder of the sorts of things you can do. You can do Bode diagrams, Nyquist diagrams, root loci, closed loop step responses, and so on. So a quick illustration, and in future, we'll let you do this by yourself. So there's the system. First of all, I can enter that into MATLAB. Then I might be able to do, for example, a Bode plot. 
Now we'll just find the window. There it is. And you can see the boat diagram shows the sort of shape we came up with. It starts with a low gain. It was a half, which is minus 6 decibels. Initially the gain goes up quite a lot before coming down again. The phase starts at minus 180, moves up, goes above minus 90 into quadrant 4 before coming back to minus 90. I can look at the Nyquist plot. And again, there you can see the sort of funny shape that we got. Started at minus and a half, went over into quadrant four before coming back to the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. And clearly, what I can also do, if I just copy this, so you can see, is I could, for example, multiply g by three, which is bigger than two, read you the Nyquist plot, and what do you notice? If you use a gain that large, you've now got the critical point inside the plot, and we've got our anti-clockwise encirclement, so we become closer stable. If I actually use 2, as you see I've done here, so let's use 2, which is on the border, and then if I go to the command window and see the answer, what do you notice? You had a pole on 0, i.e. on the borderline between stability and instability, as expected. Next example, assess the closed loop stability given the Nyquist diagram and you're given the G and the M. Now, this one is not quite as simple as it looks and you can easily get led astray if you're not careful. So the first thing to notice is it has got this double integrator. And if you look at the Bode diagrams and do them carefully, you'll see that these plots actually go off into the minus 180 degree direction. So you do have to be careful to do a complete plot all the way to the asymptotes, otherwise you might miss that. Okay. Now the next thing to do is add our right-hand turns. So there's my right-hand turn, and do my 360 degrees at infinity, another right-hand turn, and come back in. So there's my complete Nyquist diagram. So the question now is, how many encirclements have I got, and how many do I need? Well, I want n q equals 0. That's clear because the system is open loop stable and therefore you want no encirclements. How many encirclements have you currently got? And this is, an, is a problem where students can easily make a silly mistake. So what I'm going to do is show you a trick that you might not notice. If you look at this plot here, and remember you can always distort the plot OK, you can always move the strings, but what you can't do is move them such a way that they cross the minus one point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit of the plot and I'm going to distort it down to here. OK, so I've moved that blue plot and I've just basically bent it down to there. And then the top bit, I'm also going to bend and I'm going to bend it up to here. So if you imagine that as a piece of string and I'm just moving the piece of string, but in both those cases, I didn't cross the minus one point in doing that movement. Now, what's interesting is once you've done that, you'll see that the minus one point can escape. So it's actually not encircled. If you were to calculate the net phase change, then you see it was zero. So with the current system, we've actually got n q equals zero, so we're closed loop stable. Now, what would happen if you were to reduce the gain? Then this system changes. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get rid of these black bits. OK, now, if you were to reduce the gain, then what's going to happen is you'll get this plot and this plot. And I can no longer do that distortion, because if I try to move this down and this up, they would both cross the minus one point. So I can't do that that shift anymore. And in this case, you'll find if k is small, then now nq is not, OK? It's not going to be what it was before, which was 0. You'll find nq is now 2. And you will have two right half plane poles. I recommend you look at that on MATLAB and confirm to yourself that is indeed what happens. So for small gain, you're unstable, but for large gain, you're not. 
Next example. Now this is a more straightforward one. No tricks on this one. You can see if we just add in our right hand turns. Okay. And go round like this. What you'll see is I've got NQ equals 2. I've got NO equals 0 and therefore NC equals 2. And so the system will be unstable in the closed loop for the given value of m. And clearly, to make the system stable, you've got to get this minus 1 point out to here, which means you have to reduce the gain. And you'll have to have k less than something like 0 0.5. That's obviously an approximation based upon this picture. What about this one? Again, this one's got a double integrator, so we do need to be careful, but I'll do the normal trick of adding my right-hand turns. Um, there's my right-hand turn. Go round a full 360 degrees because we've got um, a double integrator. And what you notice, you'll see that NQ equals 2, NO equals O, so NC equals 2. So for this example, you're always closed loop unstable for all positive values of gain. Another straightforward one is just to keep your confidence up. So here you'll see at the right hand turns we've got a single integrator so we do 180 degrees clockwise and what do you notice in this particular example you'll see the critical point is all the way over here and therefore NQ equals 0, NO equals 0, so NC equals 0. You can, of course, destabilize this system in the closed loop by making the gain large enough. In essence, you have to move this intercept point, and so it goes to the left of minus 1, which means you're going to need k bigger than something like 10. That's obviously approximate. Now, here's an interesting one. Assess the closed loop stability for different values of k for this system here. Now I'm going to put the arrows on because the arrows are very important. You'll see that we've got NO equals 1. So therefore we need NQ equals minus 1 to get closed loop stability. And what you'll notice is you can get a minus 1 in here. So if you could get the minus 1 point inside there, you would get your counterclockwise um, rotation. However, if you put minus 1 over here, then you get NQ equals plus 1. So we've got three different scenarios in this particular one. We've got the initial one, which has got NQ equals 0, and obviously that's not acceptable, that's bad. We've got NQ equals minus 1 if we can get them, and that's good. And then we've got NQ equals plus 1, and that's bad. So what you're saying is, how can I ensure this scenario here? Well, clearly, it means you've got to move. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is delete some of this so it doesn't get in our way. OK, so in order to get minus 1 inside where we want it, we've got to take this point and move it here, but this point has got to stay greater than minus 1, whereas this point is going to be less than minus 1. So you've got the minus 1 point has to lie in between these two. Now if you look at this particular value, I'm not going to be too precise, let's say it's minus 0. 0.85, then what that tells you is k must be greater than 1 over 0 0.85 in order to move that point to the left sufficiently. However, you will also see that this other point corresponds to minus 0 0.5, so k must be less than 2, because if you make it bigger than 2, then that point goes too far. So you've got a restricted range of k which will give you closed loop stability. In other words, k equals 1 won't work, k equals 1.5 will work, k equals 3 won't work. Okay. Again, I would suggest you look at MATLAB and prove that for yourself. Look at the root loci and see does the root loci give you the same insight and so on. 
another example. Now this one's a very straightforward one. What you can see is that we've got n o equals o, n q equals o, and therefore n c equals o. So we're closed loop stable, and there's nothing more to say. What about this one? Determine whether the system will be stable in the closed loop with gains of 1, 4, 8, and 20. And you'll see it's given you the intercept with a negative real axis. So at the moment, you've got nq equals 0, which is good. And what you'll be able to say is if k is less than 1 over 0.15, then nq equals 0, and you will be closed loop stable. However, if k is greater than 1 over 0 0.15, then you're going to get nq equals 2, and you'll be closed loop unstable. So based upon that, you can very quickly look at these gains here and see which ones are OK. So a gain of 1 will be fine. That's less than 1 over 0 0.15. A gain of 4 will be fine. But a gain of 8 will be too large, and a gain of 10 will be too large. Now, these next questions are for students to try by themselves. What I'm going to do is just show each question for about 10 seconds, so you can pause the video and read it, and try it by yourself. You can use MATLAB to test your answers.